you have access to the traditional institution you can be the one holding conferences of traditional rulers just get one or two that are born again and team up with them and bring in some resource to fund and they come there do you know the part of yoruba land a lot of traditional rulers have left oboni left all of those got gotten saved because of the few that started it that's what god is talking about not just coming and sitting in church and be looking everybody finding the sphere you can take hey i said the <laughs> second triangle is how god now get deploys labor from the church so first corinthians chapter 12 from verse 4 said there are manifestations of the spirit manifestation is under manifestations he said the manifestations now there are diversities of gifts he calls it gifts but it's called also manifestation here we have administrations and then here you have operations one the bible calls manifestations are nine we call them the nine gifts of the holy spirit the one the bible calls administration okay look at it there are hey 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 go back there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit and the so-called gifts is handled by the holy ghost the trinity is involved in mission you know god is a missionary god if god is involved jesus is involved the holy spirit is involved. how dare you sit down i i i heard what you read in the you, you read for us in the mission quote god has only one son and he made him a missionary how dare we keep our own okay there are manifestations of the spirit of what is the same spirit the holy ghost handles that there are administrations lord jesus handles this part and there are operations the father handles this one that is how god is revealed in the world now the ones we call manifestations are nine nine gifts of the spirit the ones we call administrations are five they are called fivefold ministries apostles prophet evangelists pastors and teachers everybody is not called to that there is another area the ones you call operations there are seven there are seven of them if i read this place where it's written in romans chapter 12 every one of them matches one of the seven mountains of society for example you have he that teacheth is calling to education it's different from the fivefold ministry office of a teacher in the church when the missionaries came teachers used to know that they are actually another arm of mission sometimes when they were sending they send some to pioneer school some to pioneer the church they used to see teaching profession as a humanitarian profession or ministry I know we have told this spirit of capitalism from america has capitalized everything i'm not saying you shouldn't be paid for the laborer is worthy of his wages but it's a ministry he that give it he should do it with cheerfulness he that give it is the ministry of world creation creating a lot of wealth yet being able to release it without any string attached to phone mission to drive social endeavors and to help the kingdom of god advance there is a ministry of business it's a ministry he that rule it rule it government okay look at first uh, romans chapter 13 where that scripture on honoring or submitting to those in authority three times there he said there are ministers of god three times it is stated there are ministers of god there are different type of ministers from the one i'm doing now their own they are allowed to carry sword you see how we are here they are outside protecting us that's an arm of government police is in government the one that sits in court that puts some people in prison is in government the executives like the governor and co are in government the ones that make law are in government all of those things that are doing are very important god plans for his people to go there if we want righteous laws to rule our society or when they want to declare law to legalize gay there will be enough evangelists in that place to stop it and re-engineer the national assembly or the state house of assembly people
people have to answer the call to that place that's what people like william woodoforce did the founder of salvation army they went there and used the law to stop slavery what a preaching in church alone was not able to do they took that message into the house of legislation the house of common and changed the destiny of the world the, the destiny of the world He that showed mercy, social services. He that escorted Ministry of Communication. This, that part you see people do, public speaking, whether they are called themselves motivation, is just one small part. The communication ministry involved using all those avenues from printed media like they used to do in the Bible time to now all the latest technologies that are here to reach a wider audience. We call it mass communication. Don't just go on personal one-on-one. -on -one, uh, step into the mass type. You can shape a whole nation. So everybody is not in divine administration. The gifts of Christ. They are called fivefold ministry. When Jesus ascended upon high, he gave those gifts to men. Everybody is not there. There are apostles in government. There are pastors in the marketplace. There are evangelists in the education sector. There are apostles in the social sector. Through this triangular strategy, God is able to reveal himself to the nations. There is he that ministered what they call helps. Is this your ministry of celebration? What you're doing here is a small part of it. I saw another dimension to you, Pastor Amara. All my life, I watch her in Calmeting, even in Accra. We have, I have never seen that. So, what she demonstrated yesterday in the bed there is that she has capacity to go beyond ministering in the church to performing in the secular arena. That means now you can develop songs that will be done in in nigerian idols she has the attitude she has the charisma i have never seen that i was shocked myself the other thing is that pastor Sarah was telling me last night that she composed the song the same day how can somebody compose that song and you have mastered all that relics i don't understand that don't people practice it to know it it's a calling that's the only way she could do that You write songs beyond worship because I'm telling you that the other mountains you write songs targeting the mountain of family songs that will heal marriages songs that will stop divorce songs that will stop promiscuity songs that will target the children and talk to them about submission to their parents another person comes up with songs targeting the political sector Songs that will help government of nations realign their heads. Songs that will help create national integration and love Nigeria. Songs that will help divide, destroy this divide between tribes and help unite the nation. Songs that will. You can write songs targeting the business sector. You can write songs just like a minister is giving a message targeting. The issue about that ministry is the message you are delivering it's not the beat that is the problem it's the message and then the pictures you are showing and that industry can destroy a society and can corrupt a whole nation can corrupt the whole world you see something like a, a sports that have become religion to some people this thing again this entertainment industry the kind of influence these people world if they use it and when it's not what is it there are people that will not be rich from pulpit mountain see this this one there's another pulpit in politics there's another pulpit in the schools there's another pulpit in sports there's a heavier a more influential pulpit maybe in entertainment there's another pulpit in the media and there are people anointed for this thing.
75 million Christians is what we have in this nation. Whether they are nominal or real, at least that's your market. Plus the fact that because of the influence that the other people on the other divide, they listen. Then I close with this. For my brothers and sisters who have been ordained, there's a triangle I want to show you. Don't build your ministry alone. There is this one man ministry that is ruining a lot of Pentecostal churches. Watch what people like us are doing. You can see the reason I can be free and go because we have handed the leadership of the Nigerian churches to another pastor. And there's somebody I led to Christ who came to Christ through me. But now he's no more that baby. He's now a father. If we don't believe in the gifts God has placed in others, we destroy the plan of God and hinder it. You just do this, your one man thing limits the growth of the church and the influence of the church in the world. There is a triangle of ministry leadership. I will show you. Spiritual leadership has a triangle. Spiritual leadership. I'll close with it. And the same thing with you. Whether you go to government, go anywhere, set up this kind of structure. Don't do it alone. First is leadership. You need leadership. In the ministry, we have leadership. You need headship. First is leadership. You have to have it. You can't have a team without a leader. It's confusion that you're creating. It's like we have a body with our head. Some people teach that kind of thing. It's not right. So in a, a church, you need a pastor. And where you have a team of pastors, you need a head pastor. In the marriage, where there's plurality of leadership, you need a, a head in the marriage. It's a husband. Anyway, the second is that you need eldership. Eldership. That word eldership doesn't mean finding all the old people in church and ordaining them elders. <laughs> in the secular world, what we call them is a team. It was a team ministry. You need the presbytery. A team of other ministers, people that are called, start finding the callings of people, take them through trainings and development. Then as they mature in character, not everybody that has a calling will join the eldership. You ready for us today that there are certain qualities. They have developed integrity. They have learned how to look after their families. They have learned, then they bring them to undergird the leadership. You don't lead alone. You don't pastor alone. You don't. The fullness of God is revealed through his body, not through the individual. There is corporate wisdom. There is corporate anointing. There is corporate grace. There is corporate wealth. We call common wealth of Israel. You do alone. You're only going to be running on your own gasoline, your own personal gift to the detriment of the church because God placed all the other gifts that the church needs. All the fivefold are in the church. In this ministry, we have all the ministry gifts. But they got born again, and those gifts have to be developed. When you finish training people, take them in prayer, present them to God, then the Holy Spirit will come heavily and put ministrations or manifestations, that's gifts, endow them with gifts. Then the ones that will go further and offer themselves for the service of God, Jesus will come and endow them with ministries. The ones that even have their eye on the wider society, the Father will come and do them with non-church ministries, marketplace ministries. And trust me, 
each of these is an equipment there are a particular set of equipment that go with each of those offices the only one that is general is the manifestation the gifts of the spirit if you read it in verse 7 of that first Corinthians, he said the manifestations of the spirit are given to everyone everybody has one some have five some have ten when he says some have ten talents some have five talents yes there are investments heaven has made in men and he gave us to go and do kingdom business when jesus returned he's going to ask what we have done with his goods those investments are not money the talents are not dollars they are not I, I, a friend of mine in lagos wrote a book the parable of the dollars and it's a great book and he talks some wonderful principles in it but he, he he's trying to explain that those talents are money and all of that i know in the prosperity setting you can use that to teach financial stewardship but they are not money they are how much did jesus leave for the disciples in the accounts the capital for engaging the nations is not money there are endowments from heaven from the holy spirit comes these nine manifestations from jesus comes the fivefold ministries they are gifts of christ he in those ways when he ascended on high he ascended that he might feel all things and when he ascended he gave gifts to men some of you have been praying for car praying for wife praying for change of wardrobe ask for heavenly gifts ask for heavenly endowments ask for an anointing for a particular sign of mission and then we come in the place of prayer you present the man in prayer the father endows them you see jesus administers the church through the fivefold the holy spirit functions through the believers through his nine manifestation but the father is not focusing on the church the father is running the nations and he has a ministries he uses to get the job done before the church ministry was going on in the world god is a god of the nations god's plan does not stop with the church church is just halfway to the program God is interested in what is happening in government, what's happening in the marketplace. And he has ministries to get that job done. When I return to Enugu this time next year for this kind of consecration service, we're going to be consecrating people for politics. Consecrating people. And there is a special anointing that hits them. Like it came on Solomon, like it came on David. You heard that uh, Paul or you know him, and the Spirit of God came upon David. The equipments that come along from heaven with it, like wisdom and some type of discernment. In the business set of the equipments that come, like power to create wealth and the gift of liberality like Solomon had to give it away. Don't lead alone. Create eldership, team of leaders, spiritual leaders. If you want your ministry to be established. People that have integrity. People that have those qualities. People that have matured. If you spot somebody as a designate. Elder designate. Put him in training. Let them know. Put them in training. And then assess. Assess after training. Evaluate. Check the impact. If their character because somebody can be a designate and might get there finally in five years don't put novice don't put people that have not conquered themselves they will turn it into dictatorship and then you have to have followership but really really this i want to use the word write that word followership here but really let me tell you what I mean by that. Lay ministries. Don't see the people as just members. See them as God's agents to go and change the world. Don't lock the people's destinies in religion. Invest in developing their ministries and then release them to the world. And they will be the one that will come back with the church multiplied in many times. Not just members to be warm in the seats. Because that's where the highest 
number of God's army for mission is hiding. And that's why the Holy Spirit gave gifts to everyone. And if they convert more, as the need arises in their mandate, he will give them more. Because you can convert spiritual gifts. In summary, I said this to the pastors that have been ordained, and even those of us that have been ordained. And I say it to all of you because of the different areas of ministry God has given you. This thing called ministry is still worship. Everyone says still worship. It's trusteeship. God trusted you with the word of life. God trusted you with human lives. God trusted you with leadership in his body. It's still worship. There are two things that is not. And that's what is ruining certain members of the clergy. And not just members of the clergy or men and women that God has called into ministry, but even some many people that God has called to different things in life. Ministry is still worship. The first thing is not is not ownership. The kingdom forbids the spirit of ownership. Don't carry that attitude to your territory. Maybe you built a church or you started a cell. You say, ah, my church. You don't own nothing. In the kingdom, the principle is you have access to everything, but you own nothing. I want to say it again. You have access. That's like the scripture says, all things are yours. But you own nothing. Who has the ownership? The earth is the Lord's. And what? And the fullness thereof. If you want to really know how much you own, explain to me how many cars you came here with when you arrived. Explain to me how many clothes, suits you came with. How many shoes you came here with. How many houses you brought here. But okay, you made them here and now you are being entrusted by God. He can trust you with certain... And he has blessed you with this to manage on his behalf administer on his behalf and you get the idea that is your own let me also ask you how many cars you are taking where you are going how many houses you are going to take with you and for those who, who think they own members how many of them will you take See, worship is not ownership, it's trusteeship. You heard about trustees, people that are entrusted with responsibility. The second thing it is not is lordship. Authority Jesus gave us is so we can serve his people. It is still worship and not lordship. Who is the head? Who is the Lord? Jesus. Wait till the judgment day to know the level of what crown and what you'll be given. And until we get there, we are servants. So the culture of the kingdom is servant leadership. If you see the difference this makes when you imbibe it in the way you do ministry. If you see the amount of issues it's going to solve for you. What made the early church powerful is that the Bible said, none of them considered anything that he had, that it was his own. So whenever it's needed, whether it's in the service of God or in, in helping them, they bring it. Because that's the culture of the kingdom. Ephesians 2 said we've been called into the common world of Israel. And the Bible said we are joined heirs with Christ. Everything that he has, everything that belongs to him, belongs to us. God puts it in my hand so I can manage it. And in stewardship, he requires faithfulness. 
but he requires competence two things jesus will judge us he, he, the scripture uses this word wise and faithful servant so he's going to say well done wise and faithful most of his parable was that who is that wise servant who his master has put in charge over his goods some translation in some places will now use the word good and faithful servant that thing he calls good is competence what he calls faithful is character a person that is trustworthy you plant church for the day you're planting it have it in your mind you can leave it just like this. anything and god gives you a car for the day he gives it no from that day that you can give it away the owner the lord can demand for it i even want to say this in finality our pastor's wives brothers and sisters a lot of people are marrying people in ministry and it's the same thing with your own private life your family life let him that marry also operate like he's not don't own your husband be a steward of that man don't own your wife be a steward don't own the children you are not the owner of those kids you are a steward and you only have till they are 21 to manage them all after god will collect them from you and start doing what he wants to do with them in the world he might collect some to be president he might collect one to be a pastor and you can't stop it the day he reveals his call to that child you know they had their time when they were managing jesus baby jesus sucked breast baby ooh. One day they came to call. He said, "Didn't you know I will be about my father's business?" What are you people disturbing? But he was still twelve because at twelve, teenage age, you still need to. So he followed them. Thirty. He abandoned the carpentry shop and the business went full blown into what is called. One day they say, "Your mother and your brothers at but they are standing outside." Thirty. He said, "Who is my mother? Who is my father? I'm not a baby anymore." They had their time. Now. I'm sure Papa Mary hears it, it strikes her heart. I, what kind of child is this? I've lost this boy. You haven't lost him. You haven't lost him. Who is my mother? Who is my father? Said anyone that hear the word of God and do it, they are my mothers, they are my sisters, they are my brothers. This is time of destiny. You know what some parents don't know? They don't know when the change has occurred. They still want to come to a young man that has just married and be controlling his life and ordering his wife around like when he was that tiny teenager. Junior, come here! Come with your younger sister. Stand there. You go to a married man's house. Didn't you read your Bible? So shall a man leave father and, and be united to his wife, and the two shall become. Free your wife to become all she can be in God's hand. It doesn't stop you from being. Free your husband to become all she can be. You are now the Lord of the church. If a man goes to preach, he must come to fall on the ground and beg you. They beg you for doing ministry. They apologize to you. You are now God. All souls are mine, said the Lord. The souls of the Father, the souls of the children, and any soul that sin it shall die. Ownership is God. Lordship is God. Ours is stewardship. Bow down your heads, let's pray. Talk to him. I dedicate my life. I give you a new control over my life. Whatever you call me to do, I say yes, Lord. I say yes. I offer you my life as a living sacrifice. Have your way in me. Have your way in me. Have your way in me. I consecrate my life for your higher purpose. Nay, you have not given your life to Christ. Start from that place. I give you my life. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me the way I've abused my destiny. Not knowing, not recognizing you that I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and personal Savior. Beyond giving your life to Christ, now move on to a higher level. 
where you offer him your life for ministry God wants to do something great with your life take my take my as I live My life is not my own To you I belong I give myself I give myself to you My life is not my own To you I belong I give myself, I give myself. 